All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to do is take a look at creating blend shapes inside of Maya. Kind of a fundamental place we need to start in regards to taking a model from Maya and setting it up for doing facial animation inside of Motion Builder. Most certainly. As a matter of fact, it's one of two major ways. We can rather take the blend shape approach or we can take the cluster approach. But let's go ahead and take a look at blend shapes. Okay. So before we actually set it up, let's talk about what a blend shape is. Basically, it's the ability to take a base model and then morph to other modified models, if you will. Does that make okay. sense? Makes perfect sense. Let's, let's take a look at it with as basic of a way as we possibly can go. Just slide over here to the front view and come up here, create an herb sphere. And let's just frame up on that guy, and that's good enough there. Scale them up a little bit, duplicate them, and we'll just move them on up. And I'm just going to duplicate off just a few of these real quick. And we'll make some modifications. It's a good idea just to kind of explain the principle before we go in there and do it with the full thing. Okay. So what I want to do is take this guy and just make some modifications. Now, I can't just go in there and scale it. Okay? Why is that, Zach? Why can't I just go in there and scale it? Well, we actually need to make a change in the components of the, of the shape. Exactly. So I see a lot of people that are new to working with blend shapes inside of Maya, and they go in there, and what they do is they like just scale it up or something like that, and then they're like, why doesn't it work? Well, that's because that's something that happened at the transform node, not actually at the shape node. Right. Okay, so now the idea, it's quite simple, actually. This is going to be our base object, and what we want to do is have the ability to morph any of these shape modifications that we've done into this, okay? So that okay. if we want the shape of this to start morphing into the shape of this, we want to be able to do that. And in fact, if we'd like to be able to sprinkle a little bit of this in there, maybe a little bit of this in there, we can do that as well. So you can start blending in between all three of those. Exactly. So to go ahead and set this up, what we need to do is first know the selection order. Now, we select all targets first, and then our base last. So these are our targets, so I'll select the three of them, and then I'll shift select our base last. Now when we get over to working with all of the shapes that have already been created for the head, we're going to talk a little bit more about a very specific order of selection just to make things a little bit easier when we get inside of Motion Builder, Okay. since, since we're working with so many different shapes here. Right. So now we've got all of our target selected, base selected last. All I need to do is from the animation menu set, simply come up here to deform, come down to create blend shape, open up options, and then from inside of options, I'm just going to leave it blank right now. And in a minute, we'll actually assign a real name when we do the real heads. Okay. But let's go ahead and look at some of the options down here. Origin, local, or world. Well, in the case of working inside of Maya with, for preparation of a model for Motion Builder, we're going to want to leave it with local so that basically, let's say this is the head and the head's walking around. When you start blending in some of these different shapes here, we don't want the head to actually well, rip off and start going towards these other locations where they were at when the blend shape was actually created. Oh, I see. By leaving it at local, it's going to keep the shape wherever it's at, in its local space, if you will, and morph into all of the different shapes there. Okay. If we were to be whirled, then the head would actually, or in this case, the sphere would actually blend over to these locations. Now, target shape options, in-betweens. This is if I wanted to just create one slider so that... Basically, depending upon the order that these guys were selected right here, as I drug one slider, let's pretend that this right here was that slider. As I started from way back over here, it would start with this shape here, and as I moved my slider to a higher number, I would blend between this, then to this, and then finally to this. Okay. Of course, in doing facial animation, that's not the idea that we want. This this might be something for like some sort of a mechanical organic type pump or something. That right. You could then write a sine wave expression to just make that oscillate back and forth. But in the case of doing facial animation, you're going to want a series of sliders. So this was perhaps left eyebrow up, this was right eyebrow up. You know, you could go and give a little bit of one, a little of another, just, you know, for some characteristics, you know, putting into the face. Oh, absolutely. Will. So um, so anyways, in-betweens, by checking in-between, that's what's going to happen. Check topology. It's a good idea to keep this on. What that's going to do is just make sure that the, po the topology of all of the targets match the base. In right. other words, do we have the same number of CVs or vertices? Exactly. That's a very important thing to keep in mind when you're making blend shapes. Absolutely. And then finally, we've got delete targets. And this is something you need to avoid if you're planning on taking your geometry over into Motion Builder. You want all of your targets to stay in the scene until you bring everything back from Motion Builder, and then at that point, then you can start deleting out your targets. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and leave that there. So I'll go ahead and hit Create, and now we've got our blend shape. You can see over here on our input section, a blend shape node. If I wanted to, I can simply come up here now to Window, come down to Animation Editors, and then come down to Blend Shape. 
And look at that. All we right. now have a little drop down that appears that allows me to blend into each of these different shapes. And what I'll do real quick is just kind of move this a little bit. There we go. So we can see things a little bit better. And the first one, remember he was the first one selected. So the first slider right here will blend us into that shape. Very nice. Second one, second one here. Blend us into that shape. And finally the third into the last shape. Now the nice thing here is the ability to go in and say maybe I want to squeeze it in a little bit and take the bottom and swell it out. So there's a whole new shape. Come over here, maybe do something like that. And uh, the nice thing to know, if you're in the middle of creating your expressions from your model to begin with, in other words, you're actually modeling your targets, Okay. what you may want to do is start out by just making a handful of them, and then go in, set up your blend shape, and make some modifications. So let's say I want to create a whole new shape all together, maybe this light bulb looking shape right there, All right. which is something similar to this, just tightened up uh, the CVs along right here along that line. So if I want to, I can now simply come in here, grab this guy, and just do a Control d to duplicate him. And we can move him out over here. And then if I wanted to, right now, of course, we've only got three sliders in here. I can select the target, shift select my base, come up here to uh, deform, come down to edit blend shape, and then come over here to add. And now I'll just come up here and say specify node. The only blend shape that exists in the scene right now is just blend shape one. So I can just do an apply and close. And now if I come back to window and then come down here to animation editors and finally to blend shape, now we have four sliders. So now if I wanted to, let's go ahead and pull these guys out, I can just create the one shape. Now watch this. Since it's an additive process, as I go through here and I start manipulating these sliders, I can get yet even more of a pronounced shape where I'm using a combination of this along with the other guys. Look at that. Very cool. For generating an entirely new look for the model. Wow. So if you just start out with just a handful of things to begin with and then use those for generating yet more targets, it's just a quick way to go about doing it. Oh, yeah. All right. So now that we have a basic understanding of how this works, what I'd like to do is go ahead and look at doing it with our real geometry. So we'll simply delete this out. And let's just go ahead and come back up here into our perspective view. And here you go. There's old Joe again. All right. And we've got a bunch of different targets already created. And as a matter of fact, they're pretty much set up right now in a specific way, aren't they, Mr. Zach? Actually, they really are set up in a specific way. Top row, if you look, the only thing that's been manipulated with the top row is just the mouth. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the next row. If you look at it, as a matter of fact, it might be a little bit better if I come in here and actually zoom in. It's just the eyebrows. Yep. Okay. And then down here. Is there anything that's been modified down here? Looks like the eyes to me. And then, Zach, what's happening with this down here? <laughs> He's got the mumps. <laughs> Do you want to tell him what you did that for? Well, actually, uh, I had to make a blend shape for the cheek actually puffing out. It's one of the required channels that we'll have to work with inside of Motion Builder. So the guy's allergic to bees. He got stung <laughs> on his cheek. He's got a giant nut He there. got hit in the face with a baseball bat, and that's the bruise. Exactly. And then, uh, and then finally... A few more down at the bottom. Um, if you notice, we're just kind of a, a little nostril up action, a right. nostril up, up, up action something. on the other side. And then um, we're going about doing things kind of unique here um, in regards to the teeth and the tongue. It all depends on the approach that you like to follow when setting up characters for animation inside of Maya. Your teeth and tongue, well, your teeth may be simply parented into bones if you wanted to do the setup that particular way. Right. In this case, we're going to make specific blend shapes out of the teeth here and the tongue as well. So we're going to have a total of three different blend shapes in all. As a matter of fact, if I come back up here real quick to Window, Animation, Editors, and Blend Shape, good. Making sure everything is good and empty. Of course it is. I just deleted it a second ago. Oh, my memory is going these days. <laughs> oh, but we already know that. So yes, yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select these in a very specific order. And as I do, Zach, if you could go ahead and take a minute, because, you know, me doing two things at once is, well... It's dangerous. Yes, exactly. Yes. Doing just one thing at one time is mm -hmm. dangerous for me. As I go through here selecting, go ahead and take just a moment and explain why I'm selecting these in a specific order. Well, actually, if you open up uh, Motion Builder and look inside the character face, there's a list of generic channels that you can use to determine exactly what blend shapes you need. As a matter of fact, they give you a little actor head to show you what those shapes need to be need to look like, and so what we did is we created those blend shapes in that order, so that if we select them in that order, they'll line up exactly inside a motion builder, so we don't have to go hunting around through the list of shapes. Exactly. So let's go ahead, now that we've got all of our targets selected, let's just come down here and shift select our base last, and it's just a matter of coming up here to window, or excuse me, to form, come down here to create blend shape, go ahead up and open the options, and we'll call this, uh, I don't know, face shapes. 
That works. Everything else is set, so we'll go ahead and create. All right, so that is done. Now let's go ahead and take care of the teeth real quick. So I'll select teeth, teeth. Now this is not the top and bottom teeth, okay? <laughs> Zach, would you like to explain to them about the top teeth not moving? Well, actually, the your top teeth are kind of bolted to the rest of your skull. If you never noticed that before, they don't tend to wiggle up and down too much. I had to explain <laughs> that earlier to Buzz. Yeah, I just sat here and just looked at him baffled. I thought everybody's teeth floated around. <laughs> He's like, why do you have a, a blend shape for the top of the teeth? And I just kind of <laughs> stared back at him like, that's not the top teeth, Buzz. And then when he started talking, I just <laughs> stared at him blankly. And before long, we were just staring blankly at one another. There you go. <laughs> so anyway. That's why most of the work gets done around here. <laughs> exactly. So basically what we've got here is the teeth down in an open position and the teeth forward as well. So now, just a note, while we didn't really, uh, there's no physical deformations that you can see there, I did not just take those teeth and just grab them and move them. I did select their components and move the individual components of the CVs all at one time. That's right, because that takes us back to what I was talking about originally. When you just go in there and you manipulate the transform node, that is not something that a blend shape is going to recognize. It's going to recognize actual component movement. Exactly. I was just kind of clarifying because it doesn't really look like the shape of those teeth were changed. And while talking about that, Zach, we could go one step further and say that Kadara recommends that you go in here and actually create teeth for all of your different blend shapes here, all for all the different positions that your shapes are going to be in. Right. Now, for the sake of time and the fact that we just find it a little bit quicker if we do it this way, and you'll see when we get over into Motion Builder how we're going to go about setting it up, it's just to us a little bit easier dealing with just two like this. Right. And everything seems to work fine in this method. So uh, let's go ahead and come over here and um, just switch over to a wireframe. And let's grab the top teeth. Just kidding. Just wanted to see the look on Zach's face. Yeah. So we'll shift select our target last. And then I'll just come back up here again to deform, create blend shape, open up options. And we can just call this teeth shapes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll create that. And then finally, we've got a tongue. And another tongue. So go ahead and grab. There we go. And up here again to deform, create blend shape, open up options, and go ahead and call this T O N G U E shape. Had to look for awesome my notes. Awesome spelling. Yeah. By yeah, the I can't way. can never remember how to spell tongue, but you know. T U N G. Hey, whatever works. All right, right. Okay, so. Hey, man, I didn't do good in school when it came to spelling. So everything else is Neither good. So we'll go, yeah, whatever. So we'll go ahead and set that up. So now we've got three blend shapes, and if we want to just come in here and simply focus on this guy, let's go and switch over to a shaded view, come up to Window, Animation Editors, come down, open up blend shapes again. What's going to happen now is you're going to see that we actually have three different rollouts, if you will, that all have different blend shapes. So we actually have three different blend shape nodes in here. So now we can come in here and open our mouth up if you wanted to, come down here and slide our teeth well forward. How about not that far? <laughs> down maybe a little bit and maybe a little forward. <laughs> <laughs> all right, having too much fun here. Maybe down a little bit more like that. And then uh, perhaps the tongue, maybe instead of going la, 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 we could just bring that down like that. But you can see how we got the control in there. Right. Okay. So I know I'm having too much fun. Sorry about that. Well, that's the thing. Once you start using blend shapes on faces, you can have a lot of fun with them. Is that your swollen cheek? It Ugh. could be. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and reset. Go ahead and scroll down here, reset. But the whole thing that I was wanting to show here, basically, is that you do now have all of these built in. Everything's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and just kind of shrink that up because of space right here. And just kind of checking some of these things out just to give everybody an idea. Hmm? Really? <laughs> let's see if we can come up with the way Zach looks when I tell him what kind of work we're going to do on the weekend. So let's see. Uh, we're actually pretty open. close. <laughs> um, except, here we go. Zach, this is what we got to do this weekend. Blah, 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 blah. Huh, 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 huh. <laughs> okay, so is that, is that pretty accurate? <laughs> That's pretty fair, yeah. Okay, so anyways, you guys get the idea. All right, Zach, so. we have seven VTMs to shoot in six hours. Go. Uh. <laughs> All right, so now that we've got our blend shape set up, everything is really ready to be exported out so we can pull it into Motion Builder. So at this point, it's just a matter of coming up here to File, Export All, and we can go in there and make sure you have it wherever you want to export the file out to. Right. And we'll just call this underscore so we can get back to it nice and easily. Uh, buzz Export for MB. Okay. Simply export, and I'm just going to tell it export. It's going to do its little thing, and there. The key thing is, 
I did not delete all of my shapes out. Right. Your targets. You do not want to get rid of them. Okay? And so with that, we have accomplished what I wanted to do in this lesson, which was simply show you how to use blend shape, how to go in there, take your model, duplicate it off, which we did with just the simple sphere, right. make modifications, set up the blend shape node, and then finally export. Okay? Overall, it's a pretty good explanation of what blend shapes are. So that's going to wrap up this lesson, and in the next one, Zach's going to show you how to do the same exact thing in 3ds Max for those that are interested in doing it in that application. All right, thanks, everyone.